Hi, I'm Rob from B&H, and in this video, we're going to take a look at Live 9, the most recent iteration of Ableton's digital audio workstation software and Ableton's first hardware controller, Push. Live has been around since 2001 and has become an extremely popular DAW. In addition to the traditional DAW features like composing, recording, editing, and mixing, Live has also been designed for use in live performance, much like an instrument. Audio and MIDI clips can be triggered and tweaked in real time for on-the-fly arrangements, and Live's warping feature allows for automatic beat matching of loops and tracks, making it a great program for both beat making and DJing, and that, along with its intuitive interface has made Live the go-to DAW for many EDM composers and performers. We don't have time in this video to go over all the features in Live. Instead, we're going to take a quick look at the updates in Live 9 and take a look at how it works with the push controller. For starters, in Live 9, the browser has been redesigned to make things easier to locate. And in addition to samples and clips, the preview tab now allows you to preview presets on Live's virtual instruments. In addition to having automation in the arrangement page, automation can now be recorded, drawn in, and edited on clips in the session view page as well. Envelope editing has been improved, and convex and concave envelope curves are now possible. MIDI editing has been improved with one click transform tools for transposing, reversing, inverting, and applying legato, while a MIDI note stretch feature allows you to move and stretch MIDI notes proportionately in time, much like warping audio clips. One very interesting new feature in Live 9 is the ability to convert audio information into MIDI data. Convert Harmony to MIDI is for polyphonic material, Melody to MIDI is for monophonic material, while Convert Drums to MIDI is for, you guessed it, drums. The gate, compressor, EQ8, and multiband dynamics devices have all been improved, and there's a brand new bus compressor called The Glue based on a classic recording console that shall remain nameless. So there's a very brief run through of some of Live 9's new additions, but it's also been tailored to work seamlessly with Ableton's new controller, Push. Push has been designed to give composers a hands-on, intuitive way to create music, primarily in the session page. Push is designed to be more of a compositional tool or instrument even, rather than a live performance device, although you can use it that way. Ableton worked with Akai to create Push, and right off the bat, I was very impressed with the build quality and feel of the controller. The metal chassis is covered in a protective rubberized coating, and the unit has a little heft to it, weighing in at just over six and a half pounds, which keeps it from sliding around when you're playing on the 64 backlit velocity and pressure sensitive pads. Push connects to your Mac or PC via the USB connection, which also supplies it with power, although an optional external power supply is provided, and when used, the extra juice makes the LEDs on the pads glow brighter. Push is designed to free you up from looking at your computer screen, so most of the functions you'll need access to are right here on the controller. In addition to the 8x8 pad grid, there are two smaller rows of pads. The top row for selection, and right below it, a row of state controls. To the right of the pad grid is a row of buttons for selecting scenes and grid values. At the top is the four-line LCD display, and above that, the nine touch-sensitive encoder knobs for various parameters. Because they're touch-sensitive, you can simply touch the encoder and see the value without altering the setting. That's very cool. The two smaller knobs on the left here are for tempo and swing adjustments, and there's a ribbon controller that defaults to function as a pitch bender. On the sides are various dedicated buttons for transport, editing, navigation, etc. All the buttons on push are backlit, and a smart feature here is that the buttons you can actually use at any given moment will be half lit, while buttons that don't do anything aren't lit at all, which is very helpful. When you engage a button, then it becomes fully lit. Let me try and give you an idea of how programming with push actually works. If you're making a track from scratch, you might want to start with a drum kit. I'll hit the Browse button here, and using the top two rows of pads, dial up an 808 kit. You'll see that the pads I use to navigate the library are lit up orange to guide me, while the green button loads the kit. I can also use the encoder knobs to browse as well. Once I load the drum rack, the pad grid gets divided into different sections. The pads in the lower left corner light up corresponding to the pads in the drum rack. The top four rows now control the step sequencer, and I can adjust the grid using these buttons on the right. So starting with 16th notes, I can select the pad I want to trigger at the bottom, and then simply light up the step where I want the MIDI trigger. I'll put in a kick drum, then a hi-hat,
I can change the grid to 30 second notes or 30 second triplets even to program the shaker. If I hold the step, I can use the encoders to nudge the timing of the note and adjust the note length and velocity. The darker blue LEDs indicate higher velocities. The note repeat function allows me to repeat notes MPC style, and I can change the timing on the repeats with the grid buttons, and I can also dial in swing. Alternately, I can hit the record button on push and record myself playing the pads in real time, and the metronome key will turn on the click if I need it. I can enable record quantize or leave it off and go back and quantize in playback. The lower right portion of the grid is dedicated to loop length controls. Each pad in this area corresponds to one of 16 bars. So to make a four bar loop at the beginning of bar one, I'll hold the top left pad in this section, which is bar one, and then this pad, which is bar four, and now I've got a four bar loop. If I want the clip to have an eight bar loop beginning at bar nine, I'll light up this pad for bar nine, and this pad for a length of eight bars. These are non-destructive edits, so if I decide later to change the loop points in the clip, that's no problem. I also appreciated the undo button, which combined with Live's infinite undo levels is incredibly helpful, while hitting shift and undo performs a redo function. So there's a little drum track, now let's add a bass line. We'll create a new MIDI track with the add track button, and then dial up a Juno 106 sounding bass. The pad grid looks completely different now, since instead of drum programming, the pads automatically reconfigure for melodic playing of scales in key. The default key is C major, so the pad at the bottom left is C1, and each pad in the row as you move right is the next note higher in the scale, while the note above it is a fourth higher. This way of arranging the grid means the same note can often be played by several different pads, and when you trigger a note, the other pads that trigger the same key light up green as well. The root notes in the scale are lit up blue to orient you, so in our case, each blue pad is a C note. Hitting the scales button allows me to adjust the key and type of scale. What's really cool about this is that you can't hit a note that's not in key. That's a great feature for less sophisticated musicians, and even for more seasoned players, experimenting with different scales can really take you in some musical directions you might not have thought about. If you prefer, you can reorient the grid so the fourth is beside the key instead of above it, or you can have the interval be a third if you want. You can also work in chromatic mode and all the notes will be available with the ones in key lit up. So I'll put push into its live recording mode and play a simple part. I have the option to make the clip loop and record with the fixed length key and that loop can be as short as one beat or as long as 32 bars. The bass part is done so I'll add a new track, dial up another synth sound, play some chords and quantize them. I can add a lead line, maybe even with a little pitch bend action. Let's put some reverb and delay on this sound by hitting the track key and dialing in some send to our effects with the encoder knobs. For more extensive mixing, I can hit the pan send key, which allows me to see and adjust those values for multiple tracks. There's also a volume button for quick level adjustments on multiple tracks. In addition to simple effect sends, I can press the device button, and in this mode, pushes encoders can control parameters in Live's devices. So for example, on my synth chord track, I can use the select keys to move between the synth and the effects in the track, and adjust the parameters I want to tweak with the encoders, while the state keys below will turn the devices on or off. I can also hit the automation button and record my parameter changes as clip automation. Now we've been spending time in note mode while we program our parts, but the session button puts us into session mode. Now the grid pads light up to indicate the clips available in each of the tracks, and I can then trigger those clips with the corresponding pads, while the grid and scene buttons on the right here allow me to trigger scenes. Personally, there weren't many negatives with push. Some customers may have been expecting push to be more performance oriented, and while you can use it in live situations, it's really designed more as a piece of studio hardware. There's no audio card in push. These input jacks on the back are for foot switches, not audio. But if you're using Ableton Live already, chances are you already have an audio card, and not including one in push helps to keep the cost down. The build quality is excellent, like I said, and I like the action on the pads, and you can adjust the threshold and velocity curves on them to suit your playing style. The pad size also seems like a reasonable compromise between having larger MPC-style pads for drum programming or smaller pads for melodic playing. 
And while it does have some audio functions, Push's features tend to be more on the MIDI programming side. So if you're primarily using Live to play back audio clips or to DJ, Push might not add much to your workflow. On the other hand, for programming MIDI parts, I loved it. To me, the way the pad grid organizes notes according to keys and scales is a major plus. I wanted one just for this feature alone. Push ships with Live 9 intro, but if your budget allows, I'd recommend upgrading to Live 9 Suite to get all the features Live has to offer, and Suite now includes Cycle 74's Max for Live instruments and effects. There are a lot more features in Live 9 and Push than we have time to cover in this video, but hopefully this overview gives you some idea of what Ableton's new controller is all about. With a vast array of pads, buttons, encoder knobs, and even a ribbon controller, Push gives you an intuitive, colorful, hands-on, and frankly, very fun way to program Ableton's Live 9 DAW. I'm Rob from B&H, and thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.